Our next chapter, Reproduction in Animals. Reproduction is an important life process. If we look at the different life processes of animals, there are the different processes like nutrition, digestion, respiration, excretion, and it also includes reproduction. So reproduction is a life process of an organism which enable it to produce a new generation. Organisms, they perpetuate their race, they continue their race or species by a process known as reproduction. So reproduction is the producing of their own kind. This is the ability of organisms. Reproduction is seen in both plants and it is seen in animals also. So in your lower class, you have studied reproduction in plants. In seventh class, you studied about the reproduction in plants. Now let us look at the reproduction in animals, how animals reproduce. So in animals, generally we see two different kinds of reproduction. The process of reproduction takes place in two different ways. In animals, we see that animals laying eggs and animals giving birth to young ones. So certain animals, they give birth to the young ones and some animals, they lay eggs. The eggs will be hatched into young ones. So two different ways. So now let us see the animals that lay eggs and animals that give birth to the young ones, they have some different features. Their body features, there are certain differences in the external body features. Let us observe some animals and their external features. Then uh, we will study this two different methods of reproduction in animals. So now we are going to find, is there any relation between the external features of an animal and its method of reproduction? So that means we are looking whether the external body features, will they give any clue about their mode of reproduction that is laying eggs, oviparous or giving birth to the young ones, viviparous. So animals that lay eggs are called oviparous animals and animals that give birth to the young ones directly are called viviparous. So here we have a list of animals, deer, leopard, pig, fish, buffalo, giraffe, elephant, frog, sparrow, lizard, crow, snake and cat. So among this list, we are going to uh, divide it into two groups depending upon the external feature, external ear. External ear, see, you have an external ear on our face. So we have an external ear. We are going to see whether which animals have the external ear and which animals do not have the external ear. And we are going to make two groups of this whole set into two groups. One group with external ear, the other group without external ear. Deer, it is having external ear. Leopard, leopard is also having external ear. Pig, pig is having external ear. Fish, it is not having external ear. Buffalo, buffalo is having external ear. And giraffe is having external ear. And elephant is having external ear. And frog is not having external ear. Sparrow. Sparrow is not having external ear. And the lizard. Lizard is not having external ear. Crow. Crow is also not having external ear. Snake is not having external ear. Cat. It's having external ear. See. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So among this list, these animals, they have external ear. These animals do not have any external ear. If you see, all these animals reproduce by laying eggs. All these animals reproduce by giving birth to the young ones. So what does it show there? External ear is a characteristic feature which decides the animal is whether egg laying or give birth to the young ones. Oviparous or viviparous. So, all the viviparous animals which give birth to the young ones, they have an external ear. And all the animals that have, that do not have an external ear, they give 
birth by laying eggs oviparous animals okay so now here we have one more set of animals and now we are going to compare one more external feature of animals so let us take the cow whether it has external ear or not yes it has external ear does it have hair or feathers or scales on its body the cows will have hair on their bodies uh, the next one rat the cows uh, the, uh, even though the hair is not seen the hair is present on certain parts of its body so it may not have hair like some dogs fur but it may have uh, certain amount of hair rat it has external ear and it has hair and if you see the crow it is not having external ear it is not having hair it is having feathers and if we take the pig pig it is having external uh, the hair external ear it has got hairs on the body and fox external ear and hairs hen no external ear no hair feathers and camel has got external ear and hairs and duck it is having no external ear no hair but feathers and a frog frog it is having no external ear no hair no feathers maybe having a uh, very little scales on their bodies and elephant elephant is having external ear hairs and no feathers and no scales so even uh, buffalo pigeon cat peacock if you observe that we can find it like so we have uh, sorted out some of the animals here what can we observe see that the animals that have external ear they have hairs and they give birth to the young ones so from this table we can understand that the animals that give birth to the young ones they have certain characteristic features like external ear and epidermal hairs the hairs on their skin so hair on the epidermis epidermal hairs and external ear are the feature of the animals which give birth to the young ones whereas the animals that lay their eggs they have either feathers or scales and they do not have any external ear so that is the characteristic features observed in egg laying animals